Good evening, everyone. Welcome to you all wherever you're coming in from, especially to our live, our streamed audience, to the second Sunday of Advent. We begin. Actually, I should introduce. I think everybody knows Father Danny by now, our vocations director. He'll be doing our preaching this evening, this weekend. We'll begin with the lighting of the Advent wreath. Light and peace in Jesus Christ, our Lord. Thanks be to God. Today is the second Sunday of Advent, and we will light the candle of peace. Last Sunday, we lit the first candle in our Advent wreath and celebrated the patriarchs. This first candle reminded us of our hope in Jesus Christ. We light it again as we remember our Savior, born a king in the line of David. Jesus was born in Bethlehem. We believe that he will come again to fulfill all of God's promises to us, to rule the world wisely and bless the nations. Today we light the second candle of Advent, the candle of peace. We remember the prophets who spoke of the coming of Christ and how a savior would be born, a king in the line of David. The prophet Isaiah called Christ the Prince of Peace. They told us how he would rule the world wisely and bless the nations. When Jesus came, he taught people the importance of being peacemakers. He said that those who make peace shall be called the children of God. Christ comes to us, he brings us peace, and he will bring everlasting peace when he comes again. We'll light the candle to remind us that Jesus is the Prince of Peace, and that only through him, peace is found. Peace is like a light shining in a dark place. As we look at this candle, we celebrate the peace that we find. Christ, light of the world, the prophets said you would bring peace and save your people from trouble. Give peace in our hearts at Christmas time. We ask that as we wait for you to come again, that you would remain present with us. Help us today and every day to worship you, to hear your word, and to do your will by sharing your peace with each other. And we ask this in the name of the one who was born in Antiphon, O people of Zion, behold, the Lord will come to save the nations, and the Lord will make the glory of his voice heard in the joy of your heart. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done, in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask the Blessed Mary, ever virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. Almighty God, have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. Almighty and merciful God, may no earthly undertaking hinder those who set out in haste to meet your Son, but may our learning of heavenly wisdom gain us admittance to his company and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Comfort, O oh comfort my people, 
says your God. Speak tenderly to Jerusalem and cry to her that she has served her turn, that her penalty is paid, that she has received from the Lord's hand double for all her sins. A voice cries out, in the wilderness, prepare the way for the Lord. Make straight in the desert a highway for our God. Every valley shall be lifted up, and every mountain and hill will be made low, and uneven ground shall become level, and the rough places a plain. Then the glory of the Lord shall be revealed, and all peoples shall see it together, for the mouth of the Lord has spoken. Get you up to a high mountain, O Zion, herald of good tidings. Lift up your voice with strength. O Jerusalem, herald of good tidings, lift it up. Do not fear. Say to the cities of Judah, Here is your God. See the Lord comes with might, and his arms rules for him. His reward is with him, and his recompense before him. He will feed his flock like a shepherd. He will gather the lambs in his arms and carry them in his bosom and gently lead the mother sheep. The word of the Lord. The response to our song, show us your steadfast love, O Lord, and grant us your salvation. Show us your steadfast love, O Lord, and grant us your salvation. Let me hear what God the Lord will speak, for he will speak peace to his people. Surely his salvation is at hand for those who fear him, that his glory may dwell in our land. Show us your steadfast love, O Lord, and grant us your salvation. Steadfast love and faithfulness will meet. Righteousness and peace will kiss each other. Faithfulness will spring up from the ground, and righteousness will look down from the sky. Show us your steadfast love, O Lord, and grant us your salvation. The Lord will give what is good, and our land will yield its increase. Righteousness will go before him and will make a path for his steps. Show us your steadfast love, O Lord, and grant us your salvation. A reading from the second letter of St. Peter. Do not ignore this one fact, beloved, that with the Lord, one day is like a thousand years, and a thousand years are like one day. The Lord is not slow about his promise, as some think of slowness, but is patient with you, not wanting any to perish, but all to come to repentance. But the day of the Lord will come like a thief, then the heavens will pass away with a loud noise, and the elements will be dissolved with fire, and the earth and everything that is done on it will be disclosed. Since all these things are to be dissolved in this way, what sort of persons ought you to be in leading lives of holiness and godliness? waiting for and hastening the coming of the day of God, because of which the heavens will be set ablaze and dissolved, and 
the elements will melt with fire. But in accordance with his promise, we wait for new heavens and a new earth where righteousness is at home. Therefore, beloved, while you are waiting for these things, strive to be found by him at peace. The word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. I read from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. The beginning of the good news of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. As it is written in the prophet Isaiah, see, I am sending my messenger ahead of you, who will prepare your way. The voice of one crying out in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord, make his paths straight. John the Baptist appeared in the wilderness, proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. And people from the whole Judean countryside and all the people of Jerusalem were going out to him and were baptized by him in the river Jordan, confessing their sins. Now John was clothed with camel's hair, with a leather belt around his waist, and he ate locusts and wild honey. He proclaimed, the one who is more powerful than I is coming after me. I am not worthy to stoop down and untie the thong of his sandals. I have baptized you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. The Gospel of the Lord. My brothers and sisters in Christ, although this coming Christmas may be a little bit different than what we're used to, I can almost guarantee that many of us are in preparation mode. We are decorating our homes, wrapping our presents, figuring out which figure will top our tree this year, whether it be an angel or a star. Pre preparation is synonymous with the Christmas season. However, Sometimes I think we are challenged by the season of Advent to prepare in a different and more important way. Prepare the way of the Lord. Make straight in the desert a highway for our God. This is what we hear from the prophet Isaiah today, as well as what's alluded of John the Baptist in today's gospel. We are called to prepare the way of the Lord. The word Advent itself points to preparation. The word comes from the Latin word adventus, meaning coming. And in Advent, we focus on three comings of Christ. We focus on his coming in history, when he was made flesh and born of the Virgin Mary. We focus on his coming in majesty, when he will return in his second coming as king and judge. And we focus on his coming to us today in mystery how Christ is present to us today. Out of the three of these, today I'd like to focus particularly on the coming of Christ in our world today. How do we prepare for Christ coming to us now in the present? In order to be prepared, we have to be aware of how Christ is made present to us today. The most profound and real way Christ is made present is right here at Mass. At the Mass, we experience Christ's presence in four distinct and powerful ways. We experience his presence in, in the proclamation of the sacred word, in listening to the scriptures, especially the gospel. We experience his presence in the priest who offers 
the sacrifice of the Mass as the person of Christ the Head. We experience his presence in our brothers and sisters who are celebrating with us, making up today the mystical body of Christ. And finally, we experience his presence in the most profound, real, and substantial way of the presence of Christ in the Holy Eucharist. In each of these four ways, Christ is present to us at Mass. And we can prepare for each one of these ways before we arrive at Mass. Whether we're coming to Mass in person, or as some of our brothers and sisters are doing today, participating virtually online. The presence of Christ in the sacred word. How do we prepare to hear his word? One of the easiest avenues to do this is to read the readings of the day before we attend Mass. If possible, a few days or even a week before the Mass. By reading before the Mass, we allow the Holy Spirit to speak to us through the coming days to help us to be more present of Christ's Word. I know when I have a chance to read the readings of the day before Mass, I'm much more focused, much more attentive, and I can enter into the story of salvation history. If it's hard to focus on preparing all four readings, the first reading, the Psalms, the second reading, and the Gospel, I'd recommend just starting with reading the Gospel of the day. Read it slowly and let it sit in your heart, allowing the Holy Spirit to speak with you and prepare you to hear the word proclaimed. The presence of Christ in the priest. How do we prepare to experience Christ's presence in our priests? Prayer, my brothers and sisters, pray for them. Pray before the priest celebrates Mass. Pray especially for your pastor, Father Don, who serves you, nourishes you, and feeds you with the holy gifts of heaven, the sacraments. Pray that they may focus on what they are to do, that they may be spiritually uplifted as they offer the holy sacrifice on our behalf. As priests, we ourselves are called to prepare before we celebrate Mass. In fact, we have a great tradition and option to pray a separate prayer as we place each piece of clothing on us that we use for the celebration of the Mass. The amice around our necks, the alb, the cincher, the stole, and finally, the chasuble. This is an order to remind us of the great privilege and responsibility we carry when we celebrate the Mass. The presence of Christ in our brothers and sisters. How can we prepare to see Christ in our brothers and sisters at Mass? This is where we have to take a deep and heartfelt look on our own faults, what we've done and what we fail to do. Make a, making a good examination of conscience is one of the best things we can do. Reflecting on, where have I hurt a brother or sister? Where do we have resentment in our hearts? And do I need to ask someone for their forgiveness? A good confession can help us to spiritually prepare to see Christ in our brothers and sisters. For as Jesus himself said, so if you are offering your gift at the altar and there remember that your brother has something against you, leave your gift there before the altar and go first, be reconciled to your brother, and then come and offer your gift. Before we offer the gift of our very selves, let us be aware and ask the Holy Spirit to help us to recollect on where we need to experience and give God's forgiveness to others. Finally, the presence of Christ in the Eucharist. To realize that this is truly Jesus' body, blood, soul, and divinity before us in the form of bread and wine is a great privilege and an even greater blessing to be able to receive him. How can we prepare for this profound encounter with the Lord? Two things come to mind. My mom and dad actually taught me the first way. When I was a young boy, my parents, my sister, my brother and I would go to Mass every Sunday. 
And without fail, as soon as we entered the church, we put our hand in the holy water font and blessed ourselves, making the sign of the cross. We would genuflect towards the tabernacle and would slip into our pews. We'd pull down the kneeler, kneel quietly, and say a prayer. I didn't understand why, but I imitated my parents, making the sign of the cross, kneeling, and just remaining silent. What they revealed as I got older is that this, the church, is a holy place. And where the light shines near the tabernacle reveals that God is present here. Just taking a few quiet moments, even a few minutes of preparation, allowed my heart to prepare for the greatest mystery of Christ's presence here on earth. This is the first way of preparation. The second is this, spending time with the Lord in adoration. The grace of Christ's presence is given to us freely, but our relationship with him takes work on our part. We have to spend time with him. To spend time in adoration in silence before the Blessed Sacrament is a great opportunity to meet the Lord one on one. When we spend time in adoration and prayer, we spend time with Christ. Here at the parish, every Wednesday at 11 a.m. is adoration. If you've never been to adoration, I recommend you come and meet the Lord in a profound, beautiful, and sacred way. And I promise you, the next time you receive Eucharist, whether it be physically or spiritually, His presence will burn in your heart, and your awareness of His presence will be that much greater. For those of you watching at home on our live on our stream, you can always watch one of the previous Wednesday adorations Father Don and I recorded back when we started the pandemic. It's available on our YouTube channel. Just spending time in virtual adoration, just as if you were here at the church, and know that Jesus is with you. He's with you in your spiritual desire to be with him. My brothers and sisters in Christ, let us prepare the way of the Lord. Christ comes to us in today's Mass, in his word, by his priest, through his people, especially in his sacred body and blood of the Eucharist. Jesus himself promised that he would remain with us until the end of the age, when he will come in majesty and glory. Thank God for his presence in the gift of the Holy Mass. Father Padre Pio, or Saint Padre Pio, said it best. It would be, be it would be easier for the world to survive without the sun than to do without the Holy Mass. May God bless you. Confess our faith to the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, He rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. The coming of our Redeemer was foretold by the prophets by preaching repentance from sins.
John the Baptist heralded his appearance. In the spirit of penance, let us now seek God's help through our prayers. For the church, speaking the words of comfort and hope to the afflicted, we pray to the Lord. For those in authority, recognizing their role in manifesting the reign of Jesus Christ our God, we pray to the Lord. For the poor and the homeless, seeking shelter and refuge this winter, we pray to the Lord. For this community of St. John the Divine, witnessing to the coming of Christ in our homes, schools, and places of work, we pray to the Lord. And for the dead, longing for eternal peace in the presence of God's arms, especially for Alice Schneider, Robert Strauss and Louise Sprovieri. We pray to the Lord. Most loving Father, look upon the needs of your people and grant our petitions as we prepare a way for your Son who lives and reigns forever and ever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you. For to the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. For to the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Be pleased, O Lord, with our humble prayers and offerings. And since we have no merits to plead our cause, come, we pray, to our rescue with the protection of your mercy through Christ our Lord. And the Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For he assumed at his first coming the lowliness of human flesh, and so fulfilled the design you formed long ago, and opened for us the way to eternal salvation, that when he comes again in glory and majesty, and all is at last made manifest, we who watch for that day may inherit the great promise in which now we dare to hope. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. 
Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. similar way when supper was ended he took the chalice and once more giving thanks he gave it to his disciples saying take this all of you drink from it for this is a chalice of my blood the blood of the new and eternal covenant which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins do this mystery of faith, we proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, and by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you, look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer to each other a sign of that peace.
Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Happy are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
Jerusalem, arise and stand upon the heights, and behold the joy which comes to you from God. Replenished by the food of spiritual nourishment, we humbly beseech you, O Lord, that through our partaking in this mystery, you may teach us to judge wisely the things of earth and to hold firm to the things of heaven. Through Christ our Lord. A couple of announcements, brothers and sisters. First of all, the Knights of Columbus and the North it's very quick that we can't gather through there, but they are passing out if you're interested in the magnets of Keep Christ in Christmas will be available. Donations are appreciated and are available. Also, you'll find on our website and on the diocesan website a link to the bishop's uh, new protocols uh, in regards to COVID and what's going on. Um, for us here especially, uh, to highlight, now uh, first wearing face masks are now required by law. Um, Mrs. McCann, obviously her son is exempt from that. In that regard, anybody else who, who cannot wear a face mask in the church will not be allowed in unless they bring me personally a note from their doctor, the healthcare professional stating that they cannot wear a mask, but the reason personally is this is now the law, so now this will happen. Those said individuals who cannot wear masks during during the service, there will be a designated area in the church set for them, and they are not to come up for communion. I will come back and bring communion for them also if you cannot wear a mask. Like I said, this will be posted on our website early next week, and then the link Actually, if you go on the diocesan website, it's about 19 pages. I don't think you want to hear me read that all for you right now. 19 pages, sit back, post it up there, and read it all the way through. But this is the big one right here, right now. And this has to be brought in. The notice would have to be brought in by January 1st, 2021. Uh, meaning that you have to go go to your doctor, get the note, and then bring it over to Father Don. And that would go in a file cabinet, a locked file cabinet, in my office. It's not for public consumption. It sits in a private folder, and it goes into a locked and the Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, brothers and sisters, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Go with the peace of Christ.